you should be more concerned with creating art that is emotionally resonant than something that is like intellectually satisfying. You were doing what essentially me and Mahler do all the time with movies is we are the robot essentially and we pick apart what it's wrong with the movie on an objective structural level. So it's kind of strange to me why you just are kind of flipping the script and going from that to just kind of ignoring uh, some of the similar problems that The Last Jedi shares that you don't really seem to bring up with The Last Jedi. Personally, I, just, like, I think it's about evolving as a critic. Hello? Oh, hello. There we go. How do you do, sir? Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> How has your day been? It's actually been great. I've got to take an, I've been able to take a break and watching you guys. So you guys don't like the video, eh? Well, uh, <laughs> that, it's that's not my a, favorite video. That's a yeah. way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been watching. How much? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit. But uh, I, th I think uh, you said it best. I think you were quoting a commentator saying that uh, this doesn't have to be a debate. It can just be a conversation. So absolutely. Just, like, can just let the air out of the room here a bit um, we would prefer that to be honest so yeah do you, i mean do you do you know our names at all by any i chance? don't i don't because we uh we get mentioned a lot in the last jedi sort of discussions wolf i think has the highest viewed rant on the film on youtube right now uh oh i know your channels i didn't know your real oh, that's what i meant is do you uh, have heard of us then yes i've uh, i've seen the videos pop up you haven't uh, given them a watch of you, by any chance? Um, I've watched um, the first one of yours, um, the uh, like your longer one. Mm -hmm. I don't think I watched the Unbridled Rage one. And I watched about... Uh, I did watch the Dishonored Wolf one as well. Fair if enough. it's any point then, of consolation, uh, I've known Mahler for like six months now, and I still haven't watched all of his videos on The Last <laughs> Jedi yet. Yeah. It takes a few years to get through all of mine. Yeah, uh, you got quite a lot to say about it, eh? Oh, yeah. I don't think I said it in the series, but I've said it several times that I think Last Jedi should be used in universities to, like, show how fundamentally broken a film can get from a script. It's, like, fascinating. Right. A lot of your points, I find, um, I, and I guess this is what I was, like, trying to get across in this video, is, like, it depends on how you rank things, right? Like, what you value. Like, because you're very oriented on, like, plot holes, right? Are, like, very important. Can I can I make that like a uh, assumption? Like, well, is that a, is that a fair representation of your position? I'd go for consistency uh, as a word. Like it applies to character and plot, which essentially takes the whole script with it. Then, right? Okay. Because um, yeah, I think that's like where like most of the disagreements come from. Is just like like for me, like when a movie has a plot hole that doesn't bother me as much anymore as maybe it used to. Like when a movie doesn't quite fit in with its predecessors that doesn't bother me as much as it used to um and i can totally like see those as being like derailing parts of this movie but yeah so what changed probably just doing this more um just like watching more movies and writing more essays like the more you get into it i don't know how to, how to phrase this i guess but like i get i'm more interested in like what the like underlying uh what part of a movie is like what's the author attempting to get across like five years from now when all of the like surface level details of a movie become obscured once they get blurry right like what are the things that are still left over um and like i think there's a bunch of things in the last jedi that are pretty valuable and are gonna stick around so that to me is like a like a sign of quality uh so like the idea that failure can make for a great teacher i absolutely love that idea because it's very true very applicable uh, applicable but uh, I think the film does an awful job of putting it forward, which is where my grievance would come in. Is uh, Funnily enough, I would probably defend that quote you showed in your video where the person said uh, it's about the execution. Um, I probably would go a bit more detailed than that, but yes, there is... I, I don't particularly care what the message was. I would accept whatever uh, was assessed by even Ryan Johnson himself. He said, like, these are the things that I think my movie was trying to get across. That's what I was trying to do in my writing. I'd be like, oh, that's that's fine, but you know, you, you've got this year, this year, this year, this year, these are all errors. I said I got, I'd happily have the conversation with him because I don't know how he'd be able to defend the film uh, from a position of what I would probably, 
I don't want to be condescending, but reality, like there are rules that you have to stick to in order to have a story be coherent. You can't just jump and, you know, I'm not even being metaphorical with that. Like the film's editing is a problem, um, among other things. You know, like the, the basic assessment that the audience have an uh, assumption about where certain things are and then they are moved just so the story can continue is it's just cheap. That's like you wouldn't teach that in a writing school because that would be a mistake or it would it would be cheap writing, like I said. So the film has classic examples throughout all of the scenes and we've been over so many of them, me and Wolf with so many different people. Um and the the it usually comes down to whatever the message was in the film supersedes any of these errors. And so the question becomes in that case, can anything be looked at as flawed? Could you just say this for everything? Well, it, it kind of depends on what you like what your goal is in critiquing it right um and like what your uh what your goal is to get out of a movie like i totally understand like a lot of people going you know most people go to movies and they'll rank it on did i enjoy myself or in in the theater or not right and like that's perfectly fine like that's the normal way to consume media um but there's like a whole other group of people who are you know, like myself, who are just, you know, going to read things again and again and again and, like, look into it. And we're just going to get a lot more value out of um, it having some more substance to it. Like, I felt like The Force Awakens doesn't have a lot of... Like, it's not a very interesting movie to me because it just doesn't have a lot of substance. Um, but, like, to your point of, like, can you make mistakes, right? If, like, if... <laughs> Um, like, I see how you're taking away from my video that, like, if everything's interpretation, then, like, can you make mistakes? And, like, the answer is, like, absolutely, but um, for certain audiences, right? Like, I have three videos on my channel that are just, you know, talking about um, The Last Airbender, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a movie I absolutely loathe. But there's kids who go into that movie and get a lot out of it, right? It's, like, a lot of fun for them. So like the mistakes that are made are just they're like they're not being absorbed by the audience at all um so it's like uh it's it's a different thing it, it, these things are you know it's it's super nuanced so like anytime if we were watching yeah. an apollo launch and the ship it, itself exploded and your child next to you said i love fireworks this is amazing would you tell them yeah it is pretty good but there is a different interpretation in which many men have just died and the technology has been wasted but I understand that you enjoy it, so it's not really objectively a bad thing that's just happened there. Right, but that's um, that's not fiction, right? Uh, I, w w what is the distinction that would matter in this case? Well, I think, I mean, I think you're attempting to, like, equate, um, like, a fictional story to an event in reality, right? Well, I mean, you could have a movie where that exact event happens and the kid could have the same reaction. Uh-huh, right? And But there could be a different context to it happening in the story, right? Because, like, everything that's happening in a story is metaphorical, right? Uh, to an extent. Like, it's representative of something. Uh, could you not make that argument for reality? I don't know. No, I don't think so. So you can't so. interpret events on the planet as something else? Spiritual, maybe? Right, but like... <laughs> see, I get like what you're... Hmm. You can... Like, you can absolutely do that, right? I mean, what you're, what you're trying to get at here is like, you would be wrong, right? Like, if you... Like, if, uh, if the Northern Lights happened and you think that it's X thing that's happening, you're incorrect. Right. Yeah, it has but an I just, explainable, just, like yeah. definitive set of signs that behind it. While someone else could be like, "Well, that's God reaching out to us." Right. Right. Um, but I just, I just think stories just operate at a at a different level. Um, I don't know if I can fully articulate w what that level is, but I just don't think it's kind of like a useful comparison to be like, "Well, to like, what if it's happening in reality?" Right? Because it isn't. It's fiction. Well, as Wolf just said, you can just have the same scenario, but in a film, if that makes it easier to understand. Right. And, like, um, so my, like, my background is, like, I come out of English literature, right? And if you were to write an essay for, um, like, analyzing a book, right, 
you do have to back up your position, right? Like if you're making a thematic analysis of any kind of text, like you have to come up with evidence, right? Like that's that's important in order to convince someone else that it's the truth, but it's still like it's still a true fact that it's true for you, right? Okay. I wouldn't deny that, but that's what we would separate as subjective versus objective. Until your um, claims have any kind of evidence, proof, or argumentation, that's all they are. They're just well, they're, they're still subjective, though. They're still subjective. Like, even if you put a... Like, if even you, you can put, like, a... Even if you can get together the most airtight argument that such and such a movie is about such and such a topic, it's it's still not objective. It's still subjective, right? Why? Because it depends on, um, well, first of all, because other people can still, you can always levy a uh, counter argument to, to these kinds of things in English literature, right? And, um, and like that little diagram that I had in this video about like the work, the universe, the artist and the audience, um, like those things are always changing, right? So it's always changing in the moment what a text means. Like, you know, you, um, there's a bunch of movies that uh, have changed contexts just because of the Me Too movement, right? Like you, you don't look at, you don't watch the usual suspects in the same way today than you did ten years ago. Because it's just Kevin impossible. Spacey. Because of Kevin Spacey, yeah. Like, but that would be to... see. But see, okay. So to uh, give you context for that, like uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of Kevin Spacey's work. Uh, same for a friend of mine who would have probably said he's his favorite actor, you know, bar none. Um, but after all this has happened, it's studied it a bit and he can't like separate that from the actor however if that friend was to argue that the usual suspects isn't as good a quality movie now thanks to knowing that kevin spacey had, has done what he's done uh that would be a subjective argument for the quality of the film being reduced it's not objective at all it has nothing to do with the actual film whatsoever it's j just like cultural impacts or meta narratives there's there's plenty of things going on i don't deny that but the, the film is the film um, so if I, say for example, point out how Phasma disappears and reappears during The Last Jedi, you don't come back to me with, well, I don't think that that is an editing mistake. I see it as a stylistic choice. It's like, that's, that's invalid. I mean, you can think it, but it doesn't make it true. What right, I, okay, it, but that's a little different. Like, a description of the plot is a little bit of a different thing than, um, like, an analysis of quality or theme. Right? Well, an analysis... Of a theme, would would you you did it in your video? You had a couple of examples. You pointed to um, Finn and Rose getting caught in the base as a, a failure. You, you used the word failure, uh, uh, and it's interesting to think about because what what do you think is deep about it? The fact that they failed to, to com complete their mission, or the, what what is in any way a lesson, or is interesting, or what is thematic about that? Actually, I think you're. I think uh, you might have misinterpreted what I was saying at that point in the video because I was just kind of like listing things that happen in the movie. Right? I wasn't like making an argument that like the movie's deep because these had things happen. So what was the point? Just that it happened, right? <laughs> like I just okay. Um, uh huh. Let's just. I'm trying to like think of something that we could both grab onto. So did you hear what I said in response? That like it's a really they get caught for no other reason than a random droid spots them. Do mm -hmm. Do you see that as good writing? Do you see it as bad writing? Do you see it as it's neutral? It's, it's just that is writing. That's just there's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing right with it. It's, that's something that happened. The writers decided that is something that would happen. Yeah, there's better, more character motivated ways for that scene to have happened. For so sure. So my assessment is that it's cheap because the writers would have been on the script and they'd be like, right, we need them to get caught. How are we going to do it? Droid season. Sweet. Uh -huh. Moving on. Uh -huh. While, yeah. you know, yeah, perhaps you're agreeing with this. Like, uh, you, you could have had a character reason for it. Like, one of them gets... I, I, I would try and make an argument, but there's so little character in The Last Jedi that I can't even think of what Rose could do that would be in line with her character that would cause them to fail their mission. Same for Finn, same for DJ, because we know bugger all about T DJ. But um, you understand the point, then. So if you can break down aspects of the film, as I did with the Phasma thing and that just now... Once you've done it enough throughout each of the scenes, do you not reach a conclusion? You see patterns. Right, but if, um, but like it, it matters how much of a percentage, I'm, I'm trying to speak in your, in your terms here, right? Like it matters how much of a percentage, um, like that scene affects your overall assessment of the movie, right? Like 
if that scene blew it for you, if that's 50% of, of your opinion, then it's, you know, you're, you're going to have a different opinion than someone who just values something else more. Well, right? um, we spoke to I Hate Everything, right? And uh, he said that there's only nitpicks about the plot that really are brought up. And so I said, okay, so the fact that all the Star Destroyers forget that they have hyperdrive during the chase, that's, is that a nitpick? And he was like, okay, maybe, maybe that's not a nitpick. And I was like, no, it's, it's a major plot error, that is. That's, that's the, or whatever you want to call it. Like, um, right, but I don't care. Actively, I, the, the, okay. <laughs> this I, is what I'm saying, right? I, Sorry yeah, to interrupt I you, so yeah. I had everything understood it, and he was like, yeah, yeah so the writers have actively said, we're going to forget this thing exists in order to tell our story. And so his response was, um, it doesn't bother me. And then I said, okay, it doesn't care that it doesn't bother you. This is a fact. It doesn't give a shit that you don't have a problem with it. This is the difference between objective and subjective. I don't get to tell you how I feel about it, unless I was trying to offer you my opinion on it. It's a thing that we both agree is a thing that happened. So we've got that one. We can move on to the next one. When you put them up on a big wall, like all these different things that happen, you get to the point where you're like, right, so factually, this film is you know, littered with errors. Subjectively, it, it, it could be the greatest masterpiece you've ever seen, but objectively, we're looking at a complete mess here. Um, hmm. <laughs> Again, though, like, it's it just... <laughs> like, that can be a problem of the film, but like, it, like, for me, that is a total... Like, that has zero impact on my opinion, the fact that they have hyperdrive. Right. I, or like, I, could, you know. I could say the same thing. Right. So then it doesn't factor into your equation then, right? Uh, not my subjective equation, but when I'm looking at... Say, for example, I love the film, and someone brought this to me. I have no choice but to say, yes, that is an error, and that is a problem in the script. But me saying it doesn't bother me is almost like, okay, it doesn't affect what we've just said, because we're having... It's like two conversations at once. We're talking about the things that actually happen and what they're worth you know, within the own, the film, with no other interpretation, this is literally just how things work versus how you feel about them. We don't care about how we feel about these things. We're talking about what they are and what they do. Uh -huh. We can acknowledge that it's a, it might be a problem for someone else, right? But it's a problem in their subjective lens. It doesn't make it objective that you're not talking about you're people. On that, it right? is a problem factually. It has nothing to do with people. Okay. How people interpret it, that's, that's a whole other conversation. There's, there's a line that's being crossed here, I'm trying to bring you back. We're, we're not talking about how people see it, unless you're going to say that like everything in reality is based on just how we see things, that nothing is like has, has a basis. We, we're we not going to that point, right? Like We all agree that, say for example, gravity and different laws exist. Like the, There are things that you have to abide to when you're writing your story. These things getting broken are errors, whether or not you feel they are. Right, okay, like I see... Like I, I understand what you're saying. I just don't really understand why this is such a problem. Because this is like every movie, right? Like every movie has some level of this. Um, um I suppose, but this is how it's right? determined. Like, you can you, like the you can go find how serious they are. Right, but i like the Force Awakens. I I'd posit has like just as much, just as many problems from a plot level on like. Well, those types of things. Like, I'm sure you can just dredge up give you an idea. That can, yeah. My next series is going to be on The Force Awakens, and my script is currently longer than the one for The Last Jedi. So, right. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps you're wrong. It depends. The, the one thing I'll give you, right, is Jurassic Park, very much a favorite film of mine. Uh -huh. The the T Rex walks in through his paddock through the gates, and then later on, that paddock becomes a cliff edge that the Targus dropped off. That doesn't make any sense at all. And it's there because they wanted to have the dramatics of the T-Rex entering the area and then the dramatics of the heroes being pushed off the cliff. But they said, fuck it, we're just going to put them in the same place. Hopefully people don't notice. However, right. that's, that's one. It's like, how many more can you name from Jurassic Park? It's like, it gets a little bit tough. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it does affect the quality of the film. There's no denying that. The Last Jedi, like, I've given but, you a handful. But it actually... It, okay, sorry to... You, you can finish that point there. I, don't, I, don't I was just going to say that yeah. yeah. The Last Jedi is in, like, I want to say the hundreds in terms of issues. Right, but, like, just to back to the the uh, Jurassic Park stuff, like, like, the scene is better from, like, a visceral, like, emotional, suspenseful perspective because they've made that little switch, right? Like, it's movie magic there that you forgot 
a little bit about the geography of the scene, and now the scene is better. Again, like it's act. You right? Uh, it's is it better subjectively if it's giving you those feelings. That's absolutely fine from an objective subjectively, standpoint. Yeah, it's not. Most people who watch that scene, right? Absolutely. Like it's very suspenseful. A, it's one of the best suspense scenes. There's there a reason is, I described right? it as one of my favorite films. I didn't say it was one of the best films. Yeah. Okay. Because this, that's two different things. Um, yeah, the, the objective robot who's judging these films is not going to give a crap if I say, I still love the scene. He's going to be like, I understand that. We're not talking about that. And then I go, oh, okay. And then what, what I can do is say, no, it makes sense because it was two different parts. And then we look at the scene and it's not. And I'm like, shit. Okay, fine. And then the robot is like, see? So we agree. This is objectively an issue. And then I go, yes. And then the robot tallies the, uh, the overall points of Jurassic Park. Actually, Lessons from the Screenplay did a video on it yesterday or today. It was very good explaining what the best parts of Jurassic Park are. Mm -hmm. And um, it, they, you know, the, the bad pales compared. While in The Last Jedi, we've got what I would happily call like 95% just rotten in the film in terms of bad writing. Mm -hmm. Right, but like I'm seeing you kind of come back to, uh, to this point a lot. And I just don't understand why you feel the need to like separate out what your viewing of the film is versus what your like um guess the robot what, like yeah as what the yeah the robot right like it's so that we agree like, why instead of constantly uh, fighting <laughs> as i know how altruistic that sounds but um i'm not kidding when i say like it makes conversations so much easier because if you tell us Last Jedi is a masterpiece because these amazing characters, blah, blah, blah. And then we come back with, but that doesn't make sense because this is this. Then you go, okay, both of our interpretations. I'm like, whoa, we have our interpretations, but let's see which one actually lines up with the facts. We can agree on it and then go home. So, uh, for example, you know, Hol Holdo not telling Poe her plan. Do you, like, do you genuinely think that that's, like, fine? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bother me at all. So uh, is, would your reasoning be because she doesn't trust him? Yep. So why doesn't she tell anyone else? Um, we don't know who she tells. Okay. Right. Why doesn't she tell him the plan once he knows that the transports are being fueled? What difference would it make? Um, hmm. See, this is interesting, because, like, I don't, like, <laughs> I'm not going to have... Like this is a, so I'm, I'm not, not going to have yeah. you off, right? We'll just we can put a pin in that. The process I was trying to do with you there is yeah. I'm being the robot for now because you don't know how I actually feel about those scenes. Maybe I feel it's not actually an issue. Maybe I could argue it for you. I could have I do it in my own video to try and make people feel I'm on a more of a level playing field. For example, she didn't tell him because she was testing his uh, his ability to take orders. But then my follow up question to that would have been so why didn't she do it when he held her at gunpoint and threatened the lives of the entire ship? Which I don't have an an argument for because it's absolutely ridiculous that she doesn't do it at that point. That's the breaking point in which you're going to sacrifice the entirety of the resistance just to prove a point about Poe's recklessness. Are you kidding me? Right, maybe, I don't know. Like, <laughs> See, this is interesting, right? Because for me, like, none of that stuff shows up in a first viewing. Okay. Like, maybe, or, you know, like, that's really how you're making a movie is, like, it's okay for those little details to um, not quite add up in retrospect to a degree, right? Um, and most of the audience will overlook them, like, most of the time, right? That's why, like, it's most movies are like this, right? people rather than the robot, though. Right, but I'm not... I don't really believe in your robot, right? <laughs> is is kind of what I'm saying. Because, like, no one no one makes... A mo like, there, no robots make art. Right, art is made by people, and no one would. Use, that's not what I'm saying at all. So there are films that can stand up to the robot. There are films that have scripts that the robot says this is actually excellent. Besides, I just the robot's analysis of Infinity War, for example, would probably be that it's like a six or a five out of ten. There are enough plot issues to uh, harm it, but there's so much work for the characters that has been done and established and worked on throughout the series that it's undeniable quality. Mm hmm. There are contradictions in The Last Jedi's work with the characters. That is something the robot can't abide, but plenty of people can, absolutely. And I'm not trying to devalue opinions, because plenty of people want to just... For example, Incredibles 2 came out, and those of my fans were asking me what I thought of it. It's like, for one, I've not seen it. I don't really plan to see it at all, because I don't necessarily care. But if I had seen it, I probably would have been like, yeah, I liked it, I guess. And they'll be happy to know that. They'll be like, yes, he liked it. 
and it doesn't mean anything really. Um, it's just my perspective. What they like about my channel is the robot part, where I rip everything down, so you can actually see what things are actually making you feel stuff. Uh, right, and that has negatives. Right, and that's like a fun thing to do as as like a form of criticism, I guess. But I, like again, it's just I feel like the kinds of movie, like the kind of uh, perspective you're advocating for, would just make for really boring art. Right? Well, I, I have a like, question yeah. about that. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. I, so I've been watching your videos for a while. I started around like the second Hobbit video, I think, and yeah. So what I really liked about your Hobbit videos and with your, like you mentioned before, uh, your uh, Last Airbender videos is because you were doing what essentially me and Mahler do all the time with movies is we are the robot, essentially, and we pick apart what it's wrong with the movie on an objective structural level. And I know that you have done that, and that's some of my favorite content that I've seen on your channel. So it's kind of strange to me why you just are kind of flipping the script and going from that to just kind of ignoring uh, some of the similar problems that The Last Jedi shares that you don't really seem to bring up with The Last with uh, the Last Jedi. The Hobbit shares with um, that movie, that is. Sure, yeah. I mean, that's a, it's a valid question. I mean, personally, I, just, like, I think it's about evolving as a critic. Um, it's not, like, not to say one... You know, there's there's different ways of of looking at things, and it's, it might not be a uh, an automatically a like a greater evolution. But for me, it's just more rewarding um, to look at a film through the subjective lens, and you know, you're just you're reflecting on what your emotions are in a film, as opposed to you know, it's 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 fun to make those kind of videos, the the Hobbit videos, right? Like, it, and it's cathartic to watch them especially if you didn't like a movie, but I also kind of feel like to a point it's a little bit unhealthy. And I think like YouTube is kind of filled up with a lot of uh, that kind of content. Um, this is why I think like, like cinema sins is, you know, like kind of a, um, a bit awful. It, yeah. It adds. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Wait, coming me, from that. Me and, yeah. me and Wolf do not fucking think that he makes good videos. Like I wouldn't care if he's listening to us right now. He, he blends jokes comments just in general that have no relevance aside from being comments with genuine criticisms and he puts them all into a sin counter it's the most confusing analysis i've ever seen at least with us we'll be consistent we'll be like okay this is a serious point that actually has repercussions and this is something you know kind of funny that we thought about if you know if you think about this uh, yeah you know, separate it out a bit but he's just like I mean, There's no lap dance in this scene. Ding. You're like... Uh, he'll be uh, like, oh, the logo was 25 seconds. Like, who gives a shit about the fucking logo? No one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But like, but also, like, that entire perspective of just, like... You know, his, his channel started as, let's find all the plot holes, right? And even that alone, I just think, is, like, you know, not... You know, it's not very interesting criticism. It's It's just... You know, they're just plot holes, right? Like, there's more interesting things going on in a piece of art um, than like whether it perfectly lines up with reality. Sure, uh, I think that almost a similar a similar uh, motivation behind what I do as you seem to for what you do. I think it's a problem in reverse. I think that blending the idea that a film is just good because you can interpret it as good without actually paying attention to the script harms genuinely good scripts and it confuses viewers who are trying to learn the difference. So you have something like The Last Jedi being put on the same pedestal as anything that was, you know, why, why not? Because they're both new. Infinity War uh, has so much work put into uh, conclusions for characters and payoffs, while The Last Jedi is just, like, noodling around, being like, oh, this is happening, this is happening. They're doing this for this reason. If you interpret it enough, it'll be good. It, um, why, why make good films anymore? Why, why work hard on scripts when you can just... You know, shit out on a piece of paper, and somebody online will find it good in some interpretation. So, well, that's that's not that's not what I'm saying, right? Like, that's not what I'm like arguing well, for. I'm just saying like you should be more concerned with creating art that is emotionally resonant than something that is like intellectually satisfying. So, this in is that why case, the robot is yeah. important, though. If you if you don't agree with everything from the robot, for example, he says this is issues, this is this is this, these are all issues. And you go, none of them bother me. You'd be like, well, that's 
fantastic for you, uh, but the robots just explain why it doesn't work for so many other people. And until you fix those problems, which you can, uh, I think I heard you say earlier that like uh, art that would satisfy the robot probably wouldn't be very satisfying or something like that. Is that? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's yeah. to me that's utter nonsense. Like Terminator Two, for example, it would the please Lord the, the robot massively outside of maybe one or two issues. This is this is my crux of my point. Um, Picture the robot on the scale between 0 and 100. For every floor, it knocks it down by one peg. So, like, do you think the 80% would not be counted as a pretty great film? Because I would. I'd be like, shit, man, that's, uh, th th that's a good score to reach. And, you know, plenty of films get over that. Is there no film you've watched and thought, yeah, no one's going to be able to poke a hole in this. This is a tight script. Um, hmm. I don't have, like, an example, like, right off the top of my head. Uh, like what? What are you thinking of? Well, uh, have you seen In Bruges? Uh huh. Yeah. So, what? What would you say is a plot hole or an error or some kind of inconsistency in that film? I have no idea. Um, it's been a while since I've, the I've film watched that movie. So. Is absurdly simplistic. Two guys go to a town. Another guy comes in later. There's a gunfight. That's the end of the film. And you could be like, well, then you know, it's like ah, it, it, it's about the characters. It always is. That's where the quality lies. The plot is tight. The plot is simple. And uh, it would score high with the robot, but someone could come along and be like, well, I hated it, and then someone could uh, explain why. It's like, well, it's boring. The two characters spend so much time doing nothing in this town. It's like, why, why would I care? It's like, that's absolutely fine, but objectively speaking, it's, uh, it's got shit tons going on, and you'd analyze the scenes showing all of the, the imagery and parts of the dialogue that are revealing to you the history of these two characters over time, and then that person can be like, well, well, I found it boring. It's like, that's subjective. Try again. And then they go, Okay, well, it contradicts because at one point he says this, and at another point he says this, and the robot is going to have to throw that line or that declaration against the actual film and see what's right. And then it's like, okay, actually, no, it does make sense. And then that person again is stuck because they didn't like it, but they don't actually have any objective reasoning, so they have to give up and say, I just don't like it. Personally, I just don't like it. And the robot is like, thumbs up. That is absolutely fine because that is subjectivity. Uh, right, but... Okay, but like if they don't have an argument for why they don't like it, right? Then they probably just haven't dug deeply enough. Um, or they're biased. No, but, but that's exactly it, right? Like they're biased because the partic that particular story doesn't resonate with them as a person, right? Cool. Like everyone's biased. And that's, you know, if you have a complicated relationship with your father, then you're going to react more, like react deeply to movies that are about that, right? You can call that bias, but that's also like why art exists is to like explore that to give you a better understanding of like the feeling that you already have, and like I don't know. I think we're just gonna have to like agree to disagree here because I just don't find any, I don't find any well, value in discounting I that. Like, like that is like so much more there. to me. Than... We haven't discounted it. We've just described yeah. it as subjective. Well, I have a uh, something to go off of that uh -huh. that uh, father example you just used. So yeah. let's say that you had a girlfriend that cheated on you with your best friend. Could you not, by that same account, say that the room resonated with you for having pretty much the exact same theme, even though that movie is objectively horrible? Right, right, exactly. So, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe it like... <laughs> I don't like using, like, the word objectively is just, it's very, it's it's tough to use that word in regards to art, right? Because, yes, there's always that one person who's like, actually, I like it because of such and such a reason. This happened in my life, right? And then it's not objective, right? It's not objective if one person disagrees with okay, it. Okay, let's stop right? there. So, so uh, I don't agree that the star that we orbit around is called the sun. Therefore, it's not objective. I don't okay, agree that the world is round, therefore it's not objective. I made this uh, argument no, 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 to you, a need, different... you, need a, you need an argument from art. That's the thing. You can't just, you can't just use well, so scientific facts to disprove an artistic I, argument. Right? Like they're I not, had this argument not with scientific. the right opinion, and he's extremely pedantic and, and I'm going to say, intelligent. I like the guy a lot. Uh, his response to that was, science uses uh, objective definitions. And I said back to him, you have definitions in art for many of film filmmaking processes. Uh, right, just but because... they're always shifting. Name one that shifted. There's plenty of, like... Um... And I already have an <laughs> answer for that, even if... Whether or not you can come up with an answer... But I just, like... By saying, 
that Pluto was a planet, now it's not, then it is. Science changes definitions as well. Okay, that's... <laughs> this is really funny. Um, but I mean, like, you know, there's certain... Cin- like, uh, like c- cinematography and, like, the emotions that you get out of it shifts over time, right? We're not like, talking about emotions, though. Composition uh, can be objectively assessed. For example, the focus on a frame, you could have everything is blurry throughout the whole film. You don't get to go, that's objectively good filmmaking, be like, no, it's out of focus. That is bad. Okay, right. But like a certain technique that you could use could shift over time, right? Like people could have different emotional reactions to how, um, uh, like, a, like a hard zoom in, right? If that's, u- if that's used, a, like if it's overused, then the context shifts. Right, so like the technique that you're using suddenly has new meaning, right? And these things are you have an objective argument leading to feelings. You'd be like overuse results in negative emotional reactions. It's like you can actually prove why. Be like repetitive strain. It's just like there you go. (laughs) Okay, right, but like, but like it does change over time, right? Feeling emotional arguments. I, I, it's like I don't disagree with you, but this has nothing to do with objectivity. Like I, I. Yes, these people do interpret things differently over time. Right. Okay. Well. Hmm. <laughs> well, I, gotta... I think we're kind of getting we're getting like a little too like esoteric here, where it's like you know I'm not gonna, I like I really just can't share your <laughs> your opinions about how to describe something as objective in art, right? Well, I, like I got a you know example for you. So I mean, obviously. I can like point out uh, Surtur from Thor Ragnarok, and I think he looks fucking hideous. Mahler doesn't really have a problem with it, so that's like obviously subjective. I can't exactly measure what makes it look bad, aside from comparing it to things that I think look better. But if we're talking about just writing, if I say Yoda using lightning as a Force ghost makes no sense and breaks a lot of fundamental rules in the Star Wars universe. And I say, well, if he could use the, if he could use lightning in the past, then why didn't he just go to Endor, use lightning on the big uh, shield generator, and then just lower the shields for the rebels ahead of time? Do you think that's an objective problem or a subjective problem? Um, I still think that's a subjective problem because you could come up with reasons for why he's using lightning now and he's not using it then. You don't need the film to answer every single question, right? Like. Um, you, don't think, you don't feel it's the script's almost responsibility to account for these things? N- no, I, like it's it's magic, right? Like the force is magic, and now it's magic. That it well, could, couldn't force couldn't force ghosts have stopped Order sixty six from happening in that case? Then, if it's just magic, right? But but you can say that maybe the force ghost didn't have that power back then, and now you know maybe y- Yoda is getting stronger in the force as in he's dead, case, right? You see why what I mean? Like, it's a problem. Why did he use it to help them in the film then? Okay. Um, did he only use it on the island? Sure, sure. I mean, like, th- like that's a question for you to ask. But like, you know, uh, we're kind of getting to the, you know, why don't the, they they just take the eagles to Mordor kind of argument, right? But that is valid. Right, but the the actual response there is that like the eagles don't want to interfere with uh, <laughs> with the realms of men, right? Like that's the answer. I'm, well, I'm that's that's the there, there's sister, there's right? quite a few different but, answers to it, but right. But maybe the Force ghosts have you know a philosophy of only interfering to a certain extent, or maybe they can only exist for a certain period of time. Like they they can only be there for a few minutes at a time. Right. I like this like, though. This is good because you're, you're you're actually like countering with objective stuff. So because these things, if they were to be established as rules, would actually counter what we're saying. So, but they haven't been right, and I don't think they ever will be because I don't think they're going to actually care enough to do it. But what, right, what but about just the, the fact, fact that, that just the fact that you can come up with this kind of stuff, yeah, right? Not is, always, right? The, not every scenario has an answer for this. Okay. So, so why didn't they use hyperdrive? All of the star destroyers in the fleet. Yeah, I, I don't know. Because <laughs> you're going to tell me like they didn't have the fuel? It's like, uh, why? How are they there? Yeah. And if the but, ship is faster than they are, then how did it not outrun them? Oh, Why people re- have argued against that. They said that uh, it stayed at a speed that put it faster than them, but not outrunning them because it needed to conserve fuel. See, and that's... I, they never state that, but it 
it passes, right? It's not good because it's never stayed in the film, but it passes as an assumption. Like, fine. But there are way more errors you could go over. And this is the process. You, you would eventually come to a conclusion. It's like, okay, we've been through every event uh, in the film, all the characters uh, from start to finish in the plot. And it's like, you've, you tally up all these issues and then you come to your conclusion. And that's the robot's way of doing things. And then at the end of it, I'm like, yeah, you know, personally, I felt that the film was X, Y, Z. And the, a lot of the stuff that I've stated would have made me feel that way. Um, but we, it's all like we're in a round table and we get all the facts on the table and then we all have our own takeaway from it. That That's the line that's crossed. That's the, the interesting part of the dissection, if you will. My subjective assessment of a film rarely lines up with the objective one. It could be close, but it'll <laughs> rarely be like one for one. Okay, then right. Then I think we're kind of like... To me, I um, I think we just disagree on like how important it is to even acknowledge the That's the fair. robot that you've set up here, right? Um, like, because to me, like, it, if you put all of these problems into the into the robot's you know computer, you're multiplying them by zero, right? Because it doesn't affect my enjoyment of the film, right? So to me, it's just it it, it kind of like it, it's fun to to think about those kind of things after the fact, but like in the moment it's not changing anything for me. So I just don't, I just don't see it as like the main form of, of yeah, no, that's, criticism, that sense. right? So like, there's two things. The first one is yeah. the right opinions conversation with me ended with him saying, why bother? What's the point of this anyway? Why even bring this into the conversation? And so I like went at him for a good 10 minutes explaining like essentially my start to where I am now in terms of analytical conversation. And I'll just, I can reference your video. Uh, people are going to discuss your video as, as they should. And they'll um, assume that it's like, these are valid reasons for why I felt the way I did. It's like, for example, Holdo not telling Poe the plan. In your first video, you said that um, she didn't trust him. You know, that, you, you played a clip. You're like, see, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, but then someone could easily challenge that and be like, yeah, but, you know, why, why didn't she do X, Y, Z here, there, and there? And so the person you've just told that to is like, oh, yeah, it does make sense. Sweet. I did like this film, and it was a good film. That's, that's the process complete. I'm happy. But it, but if you'd accounted for you know all the counter arguments, which again you're not the only person who's done this. I hate everything has admitted to me and Wolf that he's like, yeah, I regret making my video because he didn't account for shit tons of things that happened in that film, and he got a backlash for it. It's like it comes across as you actively ignoring these things. Um, conversation becomes so much more clear and to the point. If, for example, I say to Wolf, I loved Jurassic World. Fallen Kingdom. And then he's like, what? The film was awful. And then I go, oh no, I understand the film was awful, but I really liked it. He'd be like, okay, that's strange. You usually don't like things that you can put this many holes in. And I'd be like, oh yeah, you know. For example, Batman and Robin, I actually enjoy watching because Arnie is so ridiculous in that film and it's such a it's such a stupid film. It's like a so bad it's good moment. Uh, I'm pretty sure Wolf loves The Room. It's like one of his favorite films of all time. Yeah, I love that movie. We separate these things out. Because it makes conversation so much easier. Because if he just tells me I love the room, my brain is like, does he think the room is good? And it's like, no, we're clear. The, the, the room is bad, but it's it's something you can enjoy because it's so bad. Like, And when you get to that point, if I was at that level with you like of understanding, and then I watch this video, and you tell me that this isn't you saying The Last Jedi is a good film. It's, it's arguing what you got from it and why it made you happy. And I'd be like, oh, I wonder if that could be ruined. And that's another concept. There's a friend of mine who's refusing to watch Westworld with me because I've told him that Westworld is bad and I could prove it. If he watched it with me, we could go through how everything works. He's like, no, I don't want you to take away how much I enjoyed that series. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. Kind of like funny. Everyone's different on this you know, conversation. I just like it when we have everything laid out, understood, and then we move on to the next topic. It's what makes discussion very satisfying to me. I, you can talk about how, what you, you gain from it, what, like, like lessons or, or understanding like in terms of the failure as a teacher thing, because I am on board with it. I really like that idea. I would just probably prefer it if it was executed a bit uh, more consistently, that's all. Does right. all that make sense? Yeah, no, I, like, I understand. I understand. I think I understand your position. Um, um, oh, I had something really insightful to say here. <laughs> Um, that I've kind of forgotten. Sorry for the, <laughs> sorry right. for the dead air. Yeah, um, I don't know how insightful it is, but I'm, I just was going to mention that I, you know, I don't. I think it's like a very high bar to set that you need to consider like every possible plot hole and uh, like logical problem in the film before you can have a discussion about it. 
right? Like, and that's kind of what you said here, where um, it's like you want everything laid out on the table first. But to me, it's like it's it's more interesting to just have, you know, why, like why try to think your emotions away? Is, is well, that's what kind of I would assume to that, right? discussion is for. There's a, a friend of mine who I share very close perspectives with, but he loves Iron Man three. I hate Iron Man three with a fiery passion. So we're setting up a time where we're going to be able to discuss it. We'll both watch it, and then we'll both, you know, have a conflict of ideas, and one of them is going to win. This is a person who's very on board with the perspective about objectivity versus subjectivity. We're going to come out of it as one of us is probably going to be like, okay, I was, I did have a bit of awkward, I, I didn't have the right information on this. That's that's kind of how it goes. But, but I kind of like disagree just with that assumption, right? That one of you will win and that one of you should win, right? Like, oh, that well, shouldn't really I, I use that point. very, I don't want to, I don't want to like frame it as if it's a fight. Like, I, I'm actually, we don't look at it as a, a win loss. We look at it as a gaining knowledge, gaining perspective. Right. And yeah, and no, like that's kind of what I'm attempting to do on my channel too, right? Where it's, you know, I'm looking at these uh, pieces of art and you're trying to figure out how this will help you write your own stuff in the future. You know, what are the principles that you can take out of it that will work, you know, most of the time in similar situations, right? Not all of the time, not in every situation. Um, but, you know, to me, it's like if you convince him to not like Iron Man 3, then like that's a loss. Right, like you, yeah, you, you've, you've reduced entirely. no, but you've reduced the amount of enjoyment in the world, right? Like, if my Hobbit videos actually convinced people to dislike those films, then, like, like that sucks. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I think you're looking at it from the wrong point of view because if someone, when you point out like the bad things in something that you perceive to be good, and someone's like, oh yeah, that is kind of bad, I think that really kind of strengthens the enjoyment for the really good things. Like I personally hold the Lord of the Rings movies to be the best movies I've ever seen in my life. And movies like the last Jedi just kind of enforce why I love those movies so much because the last Jedi has so many problems that just aren't even present in the Lord of the Rings films. And so when I see a bad movie and I know, and I understand why it's bad, I think that helps make the good even better it sounds like you'd be on board with the idea that we take all of the objectively good films and describe them easily to get people enjoying them for what they're worth, and then take all the objectively bad films and kind of skew them a little bit to make people enjoy them regardless of their negative qualities, let's say. Um, my concern would be, I have no idea if The Last Jedi is going to be good. I go see it, then we talk about it through our scale, and then we conclude, not a good film. Um, how everyone felt about it is, you know, that's, that's up to you. You take away from it what you will. Some, someone really loved it and then watches my videos and goes, man, I, I can't enjoy it like I used to. I just be like, well, that truth hurts. I don't know. Like, what else can you say? It's just like, yeah, you'll find something you love eventually. I'll make, I, could, I made a video on Infinity War and people commented saying that, you know, previously they thought it was okay. But after seeing this, they were like, wow, you know, it's actually blah, blah, blah. And you could argue against my assessment. I would absolutely welcome it, but I, I was trying to be as objective as possible in explaining how the characters move from X to Y to Z, and why that film is of quality, and then people can draw from the assessment emotions. You know, that would be a wonderful experience, but it, it happens both ways, because ultimately we're slaves to uh, the scale, objectivity, truth, facts, blah blah blah. It's like, you can't do anything about it. They're gonna be bad films, there's gonna be good films. We, we take them as they come, right? Right, right, right. Um... Just, just something you were saying earlier there, though, about um, um, I think you were saying about like describing uh, good films as good, and then describing um, bad films and like looking for the good. Was that what you were saying? Well, I was a little bit more cynical about it. I was trying to say right. that you be you essentially misrepresent the bad film to make things good things come out of it. Right, because I don't think that's what I'm attempt. That like I don't believe in, in that right because i'm not like i'm not lying about my opinion about something i don't something, think right? that uh, you feel you're just... lying at all <laughs> okay but, well, okay so uh, I, i'm right. not trying to offend you right so if i say yeah. that um i am one is about the problems of communism right and that's my interpretation i put that out in my video you'd be like okay i i see why you think that's the truth but that's not what the film's about and then i'd be like what you think i'm lying and you're like no no i think that you have bad information and it's by no fault of your own like i'm not, I'm not saying that you've uh ig deliberately ignored things or you're lying about all these negatives it's like no we can have the discussion first to figure out what's going on because me and 
uh, Wolf's conversation with I Hate Everything ended with I Hate Everything asking us, why do I like the film if it's bad? And it's like, well, now you need to have introspection. Figure out what your bias is. We all, as you said, we all have them. What, what is my bias towards Ro Batman and Robin that makes me enjoy it? It's like, well, I kind of love Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's probably it. Like, that, that, I, that explains it for me. I don't need someone to explain why the plot and the characters are incredible because I already know that you're going to have a really rough time figuring that out. Like, it's, it's a horrendous film. It's right, I think you're kind of you're kind of quoting uh, my video back, right? Because like one of the things I was trying to get across in that video is like you're you should try to figure out what the context is in which you're watching something, right? Sure, like, but uh, there's only right? two from what I can tell, which would be mm. no, 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 and then no, no, no. them. I think there's like there there can be infinite context in which you're watching something. Right, like it's a different context for like someone who's just a fan of the prequels is gonna have you know has a different context in which they're watching this movie, or someone who's just a fan of, um, or not a fan uh, of Star Wars, right? Like let's all of those things are the different. categories in which these contexts fall into. They would be two. And okay, so what, you, I'm, you're what saying I'm saying is, out of those thousand, objective, and objective was your two, pretty much. Okay, then I think they all fall into one, <laughs> which should be subjective. Yes. Yeah. So, what is the robot's perspective? Um. I don't. Th I think that's just the thing. I don't you think he exists. I'm not agree. I don't agree that the robot exists. Is what, so what that I'm would be a definitive here. flaw in your perspective because I can guarantee <laughs> you that for every film that exists out there, one person on this planet would have watched it as the robot would. They would have torn it apart. Me and Wolf did it with the Last Jedi. Okay, but that's still there. Like it's because of those like you've determined what the robots' values are, right? Like that's we thing. can't disagree on what the robots' values are because object objectivity is unable to be debated. But <laughs> okay, but it's only objectivity in terms of does this make sense, right? Like that's the that's the question is, that the ro that you have the robot answering is that and, a problem? Well, yes, because that's not the question that I'm attempting to answer, right? Like you're trying to answer is this movie good? And your robot is not asking that question. It's asking, does it? Does this make sense? Right? Well, I wouldn't. I guess I wouldn't want to stop at good or bad. I would want to add quality on the end, or script, or filmmaking, something instead of just an arbitrarily good or bad. When we right. say good or bad, we're probably talking about quality. Right. Quality is definable through the quality of the the actions that are being completed. Right. Like, why would these things be taught if they? couldn't be improved, meaning that they can be bad and good. They can be bad and good in most contexts, right? Like, like that's what you're trying to learn when you're trying to learn storytelling, is like, how does... Like, there's a, such a thing as, like, conventional storytelling, but there's also such a thing as, like, not conventional, like, unconventional storytelling. And it plays by completely different rules, right? Well, Quentin Tarantino um, is an unconventional storyteller, but his scripts are still provably quality. He's pretty... But he's... He's still pretty conventional, though, right? Like, sure, like he, he, uh, you know, he um, uh, has non-linear stories, but they're still, you know, pretty conventional. Um, what would you say is an unconventional story? Like, like experimental type movies, right? I don't, I don't have an example like right off the top of my head for for you here, but like. Um, or like you know, in literature, there's I'm actually planning like planning on doing a video on the anti novel, right? These are novels that are attempting to tell stories that like you know don't have plots, right? Like that's unconventional. And your robot would say like this is a bad novel, right? Not but, necessarily. Maybe, but uh, okay. Um, this is why I need an example because then I could I'd be able to understand where you're coming from better. Because, right. uh, say for example, my robot wouldn't say the book is a book is bad because it doesn't have visuals or something. It depends on what you're trying to achieve here. Like, if the project is a film telling a story, then yeah, there's going to be certain uh, expectations. But like, I don't know, Enter the Void is an unconventional film by your standards, surely? I haven't seen that movie. It's essentially a film that's like looking at what it's like to die, and it's very what you could call artsy. Um trying to think of like anything it, it, mother yeah mother yeah or Would eraser head Unconv yeah. sure uh but these films absolutely can be qualified objectively yeah okay <laughs> we keep running into this uh this uh roadblock here right because like I don't, I don't think there's a way around it here because like what you're terming on like ob objectively like i'm just seeing as another form of subjectivity um so there's, you know, 
I, I, I like I think we should tr try to like stop trying to convince each other of that point, right? Because it's like completely beyond like the movie, I guess, that we came on here to discuss, well, or like problem, your problems with if the video that I had, or if we can't reach that conclusion, then any argument we provide you can be shaken off with that's your perspective, I have mine. And that right. ends discussions. Right. There's no more to it. Nobody learns anything. Well, no, it, it doesn't, right? Because I can articulate my perspective and you can articulate yours and then we can take away what what the valuable things are from that, right? Like we can hopefully like enrich the other person's viewing of it to a, to a degree, but we don't have to... Like, I think you're, you're, um, uh, you have a desire to, like, come to a conclusion of the conversation, right? And there is no conclusion. Like, art is just endlessly talked about. It's, we're still talking about the Iliad, right? Like, it's, like, that's how this works. I mean, right? uh, the, the, for example, Captain America Civil War have probably discussed that film more than any other film, thanks to the fact that it gets criticized for quality a lot, while well, I'll, I'll defend it readily every conversation that ends with it in terms of like, oh, I didn't... Say, for example, you know, someone just says, like, uh, there is no problem with Jurassic Park as a film, and then I bring up the fence thing to you, they have now got a benefit of knowledge. They don't get to, they don't get to say back, nah, that's not a thing. It'd be like, okay. It'd be like, you know, it doesn't bother me. That's, that's a true that's, fact. I'm not going to deny go. yeah. them that. Yeah. They, they don't get to ignore it. Sure. And I'm not. I'm not ignoring the like the complaints well, that's the that, conclusion. that you information is so. introduced, accepted, concluded. Now move on. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to end the conversation about Jurassic Park or that scene. But that mm -hmm. is the that is a conclusion. Information is passed on because this is the thing. I have information on the Last Jedi. So does Wolf. So does you. We all throw it up into the air, and then which parts fall out? Because, for example, Holdo. Does it make sense that she did what she did? It's like, well, compare all of our evidence against each other's. Someone's is not going to work because we contradict. Mm -hmm. That's 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 fascinating because it's like, ah, you got new information. Now your perspective changed. Perhaps I did change your perspective by bringing up the mutiny part of it. I don't know, but it doesn't like whether or not it did change your mind. It is the truth until it's proven wrong, I suppose. But that again, that's no different than science. Right. It, oh, yeah. It's okay. So it's the the theory that you have about a particular thing, right? But like, it's just, but, and, and you've said this too, right? It's just, it's, it, you can still keep your own perspective that you had Absolutely. prior to that. Right. And that's all that I'm kind of saying here with, uh, like with my video and with, and that I've been saying here, right. Is that like, sure, we can, you know, you can, uh, find all of these problems with the movie. Right. But for someone out there or, you know, or for me, right. Like, I had like I had a I had an emotional reaction to that movie, and mm -hmm. right like that's n you're just not going to change yeah, that no, by telling me. That I wouldn't want to take it away from you. That's only going right. to happen if it yeah. happens, right? Like I don't. That's not my intention to take that away from you. Um, to give you kind of a funny example, like we me and Wolf had this debate with a, a um a guy before I forget his name, but uh, you know he was he was arguing to the death that the themes of the Last Jedi elevated above standard criticism, and I think what he was trying to say is the whole you know I emotionally got this from it, so you can't tell me it's a bad film. Probably what he was going for. So I came back with, okay, what's a bad film? Like objectively, because he did believe in that sort of state, and he was like, oh well, Suicide Squad this is a good example. And I was like, well, you can you can gain a, a perspective about teamwork, um, you know, working with other people to overcome your own evils, to defeat something that's far more important, something like that. And I was like, you can derive a lot of meaning from that film. Anyone could. I'm sure people did. I, I believe Angry Joe loved that film. Like, he sang his praises. So I was like, you know, these people do exist. And he was like, well, yeah, but that, that film's bad, though. And I was like, yeah, but you can still feel what you feel. It doesn't... And so he had to, like, basically understand the fact that he was just doing the same thing for The Last Jedi. And it's something that I wouldn't want to do... For example, someone says uh, the the Infinity Gauntlet in Infinity War doesn't really follow any kind of rule, and so it's really unclear what Thanos could even do, thus making the stakes very confusing. I don't immediately go, "Well, I love the film." I go, "Yeah, yeah, that's true." Right, and it's it's annoying actually to think about, but uh, the right. character he has a reality is so show. yeah. Th there's loads of stuff. Right. Uh, yeah, we all the stones. We don't really know what the stones can even do. Yeah. Um, there's also the the part where Thor just creates a weapon that's a Thanos killer. It's like, oh, yeah. that, that's, that's useful. 
you know, that's not good writing. <laughs> You're not going to catch me, but I still think it's a great right. film, and I have all of these objective references. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird that there's six of the gems, and one of them can control reality entirely, and three of them can just shoot lasers. Yes. <laughs> it's, that's a little, it's, a little unbalanced and weird. The, the only caveat yeah. I have is that I don't know how you write that script uh, while also explaining all the rules of the gauntlet. I suppose there's ways around it, but the, it's, it was a tough job what they did. So, uh, you know, I have some concessions about it, but it's still flaws. They are flaws. I'm not going to deny that they are flaws. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think they just should have... Uh, they should have made the gems have zero power unless they're all together at once. Right? Um, I think I probably would have gone with they each have one ability and they can only be used one at a time and they're very, very clear with what the ability is. Like, you can change... The reality one ruins shit, man. He should have just used the reality one on all of them in the in Titan. <laughs> like, what, is it, but you know, the, like yeah, opening totally, one yeah. portal at any one time is like, oh, that's pretty clear. I can understand that. Um, I don't even know what the Soul Stone does. I don't think they really give a strong, you know, purpose. Yeah, I, to think it. He, I guess he just needs it to delete the people from the universe because he can like, delete yeah. their souls. I guess. And and that's the other thing, right? Once he gets all five, six of them, what can he do? He can destroy half the universe. Like, what else can he do? <laughs> Right, well, but like gonna, what you're we're describing talk here, about that. like it breaks every scene that he's in, right? Like every scene that Thanos is in after getting the Reality Stone is broken, from your like robot perspective of yes. like, does this make sense? Um, but you still like that movie, right? And that's like really just what we're kind of yeah, which uh, is getting at here, I, right? You know, so. I have the my subjective part of it, but the objective qualities argument, it, 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 like I said, the film hits like a five or a six if you really take these things into consideration, because there's plenty to talk about for objective quality. Like I said, the f I don't know if you agree with this, but a lot of people value character well before plot. So if you can nail character, which the MCU is relatively consistent on, uh, then you've at least yeah, done that. Like plot, plot screwing up is is like the next thing. It's like the next important thing. Make sure you nail the plot. So if they fuck that up. Yes, the score goes down quite significantly. But again, it's out of my hands. I don't get to tell you that um, you know, it's exempt or blah, 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 blah. The robot is, is something we can all employ. Mm -hmm. So you can tell me just like I can tell you. I agree. It's just well, what do you, what we'll do you have... take away from... Because um, I think we're kind of going around the same point here. And like honestly, I think we... like You're terming this something that I'm not going to... like. I don't think it should be called that. But like I think it's we're kind of... Coming down to a semantic argument here. So, like, um, the objective assessment versus the subjective assessment. Yes, yeah. I just, That's like, I, I just think, like, what you're thinking of subjective or as objective is just isn't, right? Um, that's mm -hmm. just where where I'm at. Um, but what do you... Um, the argument that I have in this video about interpretive communities, like, how does that, like, affect your thoughts at all? I thought it was a bit redundant because it's just like, yes, everybody sees the film differently. Everyone picks things differently or focuses on different things differently. That's why the objective robot guy is useful because we all we, we don't get to fight him. We right, all have the, ar the, the argument, though, is that you don't see it, it dif differently, right? Like, you see it slightly differently, but, like, it's kind of interesting to me. I find it very fascinating, especially just, like, looking online, like, what the conversation is around this movie. Like, the fact that people, you know have fallen into a few camps of like these are the things we find as problems or this is what mm -hmm. I take away from the movie right like that is more interesting to me than like anything that the movie is actually doing right like I think um, you know listening to you guys react to the video I think you got like you guys were um, kind of you wanted me to kind of get on with the point right and get back to The Last Jedi because I was like talking, well, about, like I was I'm setting a bit up more like, cynical uh, about it. I felt like I knew what your point was before I watched the video, which is just going to be that, yeah, everybody has their interpretation, right? Yeah, and I mean, it is, it is that. I mean, it is like I'm kind of presenting it from like like what someone in academia would present it as, right? So that you can actually like, like I was interested in kind of formalizing this for people okay. so that they could have a discussion about it, as opposed to like just endlessly arguing about it. Um, and like to me, like providing that for a viewer is like more interesting to me than like proving the point about a movie. So like, th like that's why all that stuff is is there, right? Because um, I think that's like the actual like content of stuff uh, or, or of my videos, right? Is like sure you can like you can disagree with me on like what my final conclusions are about a movie, but like hopefully I've like passed something else on to you. Um, but I don't know. Just to get back to like the interpretive communities part of it, like, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it's kind of like an awakening when you realize that, like, 
oh, I'm in a, like, <laughs> you know, I didn't just, like, come to this conclusion. It's based on everything I've ever seen in my life yeah. and influencing how, like, what I think is good. Like, if I was to rank the things that I think are important in a film, right? Like, my ranking of things is, um, it, it's made up by what I've heard from other per from other people, right? It's like so. the concept of tropes, isn't it? We don't want to see uh, certain tropes because precisely because we've seen them in other films. So if someone was watching the first film ever and it had loads of tropes in it, they wouldn't know. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. That's, I yeah. completely agree with you. I suppose all that is said in response is like, the way I came to this point was, you know, I've been watching YouTube since it started, loads of film critics. And the part that always got me is when... Um, you know, one explains, yeah, I like it. The other explains, yeah, I dislike it. That's absolutely fine with me. But then when the guy says, I liked it because of how incredibly well put together the conflict between Holdo and Poe is. And then I'm like, okay. And then I go to the next review and he says, I hated how badly put together the conflict between Holdo and Poe is. And so I'm like, so there's got to be a conversation there, right? Like, they're basing their overall emotion on an actual scene with actual tangible things that happen. So one of them's got bad information because it can't be both. Like, it couldn't have actually been a good conflict and a bad conflict at the same time. So I want to see them talk. And if their conclusion was, oh, we have a different perspective on it, like, oh, okay, fine, you know, whatever. But if the conclusion was, oh, right, yeah, okay, you're right. I didn't realize that that actually was that. Okay. And then they both conclude, yeah, it was a bad conflict. But one of them says, but I enjoyed it still. Then that's, there we go. We've learned, we've moved on, we've analyzed that scene. Let's go. And someone could come back in 10 years and say, both of you were wrong. You missed this detail. And then both of them go, oh, shit. The scene is actually very good. You know, th this is all progress to me. And it it just assists the overall <laughs> meta, if you will, of actually being able to critically understand content. Sure, yeah. Um, like, I think you can do that in, like, um, a few situations. But, like, there's, I think it's kind of limited, like, to the degree to which, like, that kind of conversation will happen, right? Like, it's just the stuff where, like, if there's a plot hole and one person didn't notice it and the other person did, then they realize that that it exists and their views change. But like, you know, to me, like the um, the way more interesting conversation in this movie is like how Luke is characterized, and that's never going to get resolved in the way that you're describing it, right? Like, well, um, you know, if you have this plot of A to B to C to D to explain why it is you felt the way you did about Luke's position in the film and the others put together. But then we have a completely different interpretation. We share ours and the references for why we came to our conclusion. That might change your assessment or vice versa. It's like it's possible that it that it could, right? But like it's it's not as definitive as your previous case, right? Um, I'm I'm absolutely happy to agree with that. that for every yeah. single case, there's going to be a different amount of uh, you know wiggle room. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Like the amount of blur that there is there is. Uh, like it, it's just a completely different thing, right? Because it it totally goes back to like who you thought Luke was before the movie started. Yeah, right. Well, like it's, that. as Wolf brought up the whole, you know, does Serta look ugly? It's like we don't have much information to go on. If I was a CGI artist who worked really hard on the film or knew someone who did, and I can reference the Wolf why it looks good in more definitive matters, he'd be like, okay. Maybe you got me there, but until that happens, we're gonna have to agree to disagree because we got there's nothing we can do with it really, and. You know, everything has that level of understanding about it. You know how Star Destroyers work and what Hyperdrive is, so we could get to that point there. But, yeah, Luke, as you just said, who was he before the films? Who was he after the films? Is it a problem that we've missed 30 years of development? It's all, all up for discussion. We could have that discussion if you wanted, I, I, but it is important to get fundamentals out before we would uh, get to details, I suppose. Yeah, I think, uh, and I think you're kind of... Um... Uh, like I think you're kind of prioritizing the conversation around the the plot hole stuff because like that like that's where your arguments are strongest, right? So like you're starting there because like you can construct a pretty strong castle oh, around a um, position, right? So uh, we spoke to I had everything for five hours. The first point I made was one of those and a few other plot ones. And he was like, he was still like, yeah, doesn't bother me. Uh, Wolf brought in a few plot ones. Then we started going to character. We did it for a very long time. And we finally got him to go, okay, the film is bad. Fine. Like, almost begrudgedly. But like, calm down. Talked about it a bit more. And he was like, hmm. 
like yeah okay yeah uh, but what i'm trying to say is that yeah i'll start with the clean cut stuff i usually go with editing first because it's like some of the most definitive stuff in the last jedi you can't nobody can look at it and just go yeah that's that's not a problem at all um but then yeah we move out because it you know it's, it builds the structure easier if we start with the solid stuff and then we move to the um debatable stuff i suppose just so we yeah, establish okay. uh, that we both understand what an error is if you will Right. So that, that that's what I'm saying though, is that like that is like representative of like um of like what your perspective is on how to analyze films. Mm -hmm. Um whereas like for me, like if I'm gonna have a conversation or a you know, a, or a debate, like I'd prefer to talk about the you know, the Luke Skywalker stuff, right? Like I'd prefer to um how it made you feel get into that. Yeah, yeah. And like and the it, like I'm more interested in that because it's more of a debate. Right. So, um, if you will, like to get really meta, I would consider that the payoff of your video, as as with mine and Wolf's. Uh, it's almost like the summary part of the video is usually the juiciest because you'll be like, "I've just presented all this stuff to you. Now I can tell you what it did." Um, so the end of my Last Jedi critique, I think I just I go on a very large rant about the state of Star Wars, what it's done to me as a viewer, what it's done to many viewers, and you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The the Infinity War one ends with me making an extremely emotional argument about how incredible the characters are and what they've done, what they've achieved. Like, it's all very emotional. It's all very subjective. The point is that I put in the legwork first to get people there, right? So, like, I do value that as well, absolutely. It's it's really important, but I want to earn it, if that makes sense, or if that's the wrong word. Mm -hmm. Sure, no, I under, like, I understand what you... Yeah, I understand that. Because, um, yeah, you're kind of... Uh, you want to bring people into... Along with your argument, I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's just how you're constructing, how you're organizing your thoughts on on something. So we're going pretty long here. Is there something uh, else you'd like to say? Or oh, Wolf, of course. I feel like he's been silent a lot. I feel bad. Oh, I, you guys were just on such a roll. I didn't really want to interrupt you. Oh yeah, well, yeah. My apologies for that. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> you didn't apologize for having a good conversation. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, th this was a, a fun conversation. Good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bounce. All right, it was, All right. It was nice well, to meet was, you and uh, have a good day. Yeah, it was yeah, cool talking care, to you.